Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. I want to cover a little bit more content uh, following the simple ODBC connections in Adobe Lifecycle by answering a question that I got on the blog after posting that video. And let me show it to you here. User asks, uh, I have created a data drop down but only ever get the first record display. I am trying to use the column values in a form. And so I answered that question on the blog a few days ago and my answer is correct uh, but it's a lot more complicated than than I think the simple answer would be that this user may be able to take advantage of. So I rebuilt the form that we used in that video and uh, the test database and the data connection and now I want to show you a simple way to populate a drop down with the names of the database table that we had. And so if you want to know how to get to the point where we're at starting from, you need to watch the simple ODBC Connections video first and then come to this video. So what we have here is we have a text box called Names that is connected to our data connection, which is just a ODBC connection to an access database, a very simple access database with one table with the names of some cartoon characters. And so when we, when we run the form, uh, we have our buttons that can navigate through. And if we hit next, we can navigate through one at a time all of our cartoon characters. If we want to add a new one, uh, we, can, we can do so. And then we go the last, we have them all there. So that's a simple connection. It just displays one record at a time. But I believe what the blogger uh, comment was referring to was, what if, what if I want a drop down that gives me the list of the entire table so that I can then choose off a list and do things with that data dynamically? And um, when I first answered the question, I explained to him how you could bring the data connection in differently as a serialized string or a JSON object and then take in JavaScript and parse that out and, and do things which is possible and which I've done in the past but there's a simpler way that I've that I've found and I think this would help more people do it this way so first of all you gotta have all that we've done in the in the first video and then second you need to add from your data library a data drop down list and that's under the custom library so if you have your standard library shrunk down you might see custom underneath it. Underneath that is a data drop down list and you can bring that on. Now this is no different than a regular drop down list. It just has some extra features turned on automatically so you don't have to do that manually. So if we look at the the object, if we expand it out here and look at it, and we look at data bindings, there's no values of anything in here and there's no data binding. It's bound to itself in other words. We have no list items here. And what I, uh, what I want to do is read in the entire value of all the names into this list so that when I start the form, I have them all here. I don't have to next through them all like I do in this content. You would think what, you, what would be, I guess, the intuitive way to do this is to come here and just come here and bind it to names. And remember, names, capital N-A-M-E-S, is the name of our field here. And it's the same thing we drug onto our form to get this text box. And when you do that, it seems to work in that it gives you Bugs Bunny the first name in our list. And when you next through the, the buttons, it changes. But you can't get the drop down to work. There's not, uh, the drop down is not showing you everything. It's just showing you the value of whatever the current uh, pointer is pointing to in the data set. And so that's not working. So how do we get this to work then? Well. First of all, it's very unwise to have do two different uh, objects bound to the same data item. So it may be best in, in any form that uh, you're working with to delete everything that I have here, like so. And the second thing to do is we need to turn on uh, what's called dynamic properties. And so in order to do that, we need to come to our Tools menu and go to Options and when we select data binding in our options pane here 
we have this checkbox called show dynamic properties and so we want to we want to have that checked so that then allows us to access another part of our of our object here um, if you saw before when I was on this binding tab this specify item values was just a plain tab it didn't have the green color and it wasn't underlined so let me show you that real quick so without that show dynamic properties turned on you can't there's no hyperlink here to click and that's what we need to get to that show dynamic properties so when it is turned on and we select that object and go to the binding tab specify item values is now a hyperlink and when we click that this dynamic properties dialog box comes open and so here we can now choose our data connection which is our connection to the access database and then the item text we can say is names now since this is a very simple example and I only have two fields in my table in access one is the um, the automatic incre incrementing primary key and then the second is just the names um, I don't want to go too much farther with this but if you had three or four fields or if you wanted to make the item value the primary key that that would be a whole other tutorial and it would be very involved so right now we're just just for example we're gonna set the item text value to names and so now when we preview the form the drop-down works and all the names are here and we choose Mickey Mouse and we can choose Daffy Duck we can choose whoever we want whereas when that was turned off and we could not set a dynamic property uh, the form wouldn't work the way we wanted it of course you can go much farther with this when uh, when you have this functionality working on the exit event of this drop-down you can cause things to happen you can cause the value of this paste it into a text box uh, with some kind of narrative in it so now I have a text field with uh, a little bit of a narrative in it and a bracketed enter name here and I have a JavaScript set up inside of the drop-down list to replace the text enter name here with whatever choice I make and so this is just an example of what could happen on an exit event so I'm exiting and I'm gonna choose Roadrunner and now Roadrunner gets pasted in there so you can do all kinds of stuff once you get that data in that drop-down you can do anything you want with it inside of lifecycle using JavaScript and so this becomes a very powerful tool uh, in, a, in a dynamic form where you can connect to a database get some data uh, and then use it in your form to open the world up to whoever your your end user is um, using data-driven lifecycle forms so continue to ask questions uh, thank you to GIS by design for the question that uh, sparked this th this little tutorial hopefully it helps him help it, hopefully it helps others 